Sometimes programs need to use several variables that hold the same kind of information. It could be prices for all the products of a company or rainfall figures for every month of the year. Let us say that a company sells four products. We would require four different variables for storing the name of the product and four different variables for storing the price of the product. Dealing with multiple variables of the same type could present a problem. It may result in the repetition of code to perform the same function on each variable. It is possible to reproduce the same code four times. But if the company sold a hundred products, it would be difficult to handle the product number and price variables. Arrays enables you to deal with multiple variables of the same type. An array or a table is a group of elements of the same type and size having the same name. An individual element is accessed with the help of the name followed by the location called subscript, usually given within brackets. When we talk about an array, it literally means a pattern or arrangement of something. In the programming context, an array is used to group a set of related data items. An array is a variable that holds many values at the same time. All the values in the array must be of the same data type, such as an integer, character, or floating point decimal. Array results in shorter programs, and they require less memory than individual variables. Declaration of an array is done by giving the name of the array along with the number of elements it will hold. Look at the declaration, array names 4. An array is nothing but a verb used in pseudocode to declare an array. Names is the name of the array. The number that follows indicates the size of the array, in this case 4. This is also referred to as the index. Different programming languages implement arrays and indices differently. In basic, indices can start at 1. To declare an array of 100 product names in basic, you use the statement shown here. The dollar sign indicates that the array contains string. The C programming language only allows integers as indices for array. The index numbering starts with 0. The array elements can be of any type that is valid for ordinary variables. The declarations shown here are valid array declarations in C. The array vowel has five elements of type character. However, indexing starts at zero, so the last element in the array will be referred to by vowel 4. Here are some examples of valid array variable declarations in Pascal. The array price contains 100 real number elements. And option contains four character elements. Pascal allows you to declare a two-dimensional array, an array of variable types. Let us suppose that you have a class of 20 students, each identified by a student number, and that the 20 students write a computerized test with 26 true-false questions numbered A to Z. You can store the answers of each student in an array, test, declared as shown here. The representation test, 5B, refers to the answer to question B by student number 5. Once the array has been declared, some value has to be stored in it. Storing initial values in an array is called initializing an array. It is also called assigning values to an array. You assign values to the elements of an array in the same way that you do ordinary variables. Names 1 is equal to Rama. And C, C allows you to initialize the contents of an array upon declaration. For example, you can declare the array of vowels in the Roman alphabet as shown. If you want to initialize the array of vowels in the Roman alphabet in BASIC or PASCAL, you would have to assign a value to each element separately. To insert an element into an already filled array, you can move all the elements one place up to the right of the insert position. So the very last element in the array falls away. If you move all the elements one down to the left of the insert position, the very first element in the array falls away. Another way to insert an element in an array is to overwrite the current array element with the new element. When you store data using an array, it is arranged continuously, one after another, in memory. Each element is referred by its number, which also represents the position from the beginning of the array. A single dimensional array has one row and multiple columns. For example, integer number 4. 
In this example, along with the names of the students, you may want to store the marks obtained by them in subjects like Maths, Science and English. How can we represent the marks that they have scored in each subject? We can use a tabular form with columns representing the subjects and rows representing their name. Then the table would look like this. Now it is easier to see marks obtained by each student in their subject. In this table, each column contains the marks related to a particular subject, that is, Math, Science or English. Similarly, each row contains the marks related to a particular student. Such structures can be represented by two-dimensional arrays. Here we use two subscripts, first for the row and second for the column. You can declare an array that represents the above example as mark 4, 3. It is for our convenience that we have represented this data in a tabular format, although the computer stores it sequentially. One advantage of using arrays is that all elements are referred to collectively by a single name, the array name. Otherwise, we would have different variable names for each individual data. In that case, we would have 12 different variables for each individual data. You can imagine how cumbersome this situation becomes when we have a class of 40 students and 5 subjects. You can also define three or more dimensional arrays provided the programming language that we are using allows its usage. Once we have declared and initialized the array, we can sort the data and search for data in the array.